There's nothing like a classic Neapolitan lasagna with ragu and all the rich and hearty flavors that go along with it, but it's summer right now and sometimes you want something a little bit lighter, a little bit more delicate, and maybe a little bit more healthy. So this week I made vegetable lasagna from scratch, filled with grilled zucchini, fresh green pasta, and of course a hearty helping of cheese. And unexpectedly, the extra ingredients that I had left over after making this led to a delicious pasta dish as well, so stay tuned for that. So like I said, I made my lasagna from scratch, so I'll start with the pasta. Into a bowl, I put 250 grams of flour. Uh, that's just basic all-purpose flour. And that worked out to be about a cup and a third by volume. And this being spinach pasta, I need some spinach. So into a saucepan, I'll throw about 250 milliliters of water, bring that up to a boil. And I've got about 100 grams of spinach here that I'm gonna load into my steamer basket. I'll let that go for 15 to 20 minutes. We really want this to be nice and soft so that it doesn't lend any texture to the pasta. I'll dump that out, chop it up as finely as possible. And to get rid of some of the extra moisture, I threw it into a paper towel and squeezed it out as much as possible. Next, I made a little well in the flour and added in the spinach. Now I need a couple eggs, so I'll crack those into a bowl. And... Okay, good thing my counters are nice and clean, and good thing I needed an extra egg for later. So I'll just dump that on the side, and dump those two eggs into the flour. I'll add a pinch of salt, and mix it all together until a spoon becomes inconvenient. Now at first this is gonna look very, very dry, as if you did not add enough eggs, but you really just need to squish it all together and eventually the moisture from the spinach and the uh, water will hydrate the flour and it'll start sticking together a little bit more than you wanted. That's all right, just keep kneading it until everything comes together. And once a relatively smooth dough formed and it was sticking to my hands, I added a dusting of flour just to balance out that extra moisture. I kept on kneading that until all the flour was absorbed and since I was kneading it so much, the gluten started to develop and get a little bit stiff and springy. So I wrapped it up in some plastic and left it out for about a half an hour to relax. Once it's relaxed, we need to roll it out. And I'm gonna be baking my lasagna in these little heat-proof storage containers. So I'm gonna try and cut the sheets of lasagna to be about the same size as these containers. So I'll roll it out with a rolling pin to about the same width. And I just got these pasta rollers for my stand mixer, so I'm gonna use those rather than using elbow grease. I'm just gonna dust my dough with a little bit of flour so that it doesn't stick to the rollers too much. And then starting with the widest setting, I'll run it through a few times. Before working my way down to about a millimeter of thickness. I forget which setting I actually used, uh, but just keep in mind that lasagna and other pasta tends to puff up a little bit, get a little thicker when you boil it. So if you want something super thin and delicate, go thinner than you expect. And as you're rolling this out, it will get long and unwieldy. So I recommend either cutting the sheet into smaller pieces so it's more manageable or just folding it up and putting a dusting of flour in between each layer so it doesn't stick to itself. All right, once it was as thin as I wanted it to be, I cut my pasta into sheets using my baking dish as a guide. And at this point I wanna boil my pasta and I use the saute pan instead of your typical pot because as we all know, smaller amounts of water boil faster. So I added in about a liter of water. I seasoned it with plenty of salt. And once it came to a boil, one by one, I added in my sheets of lasagna. After about a minute, they're already done. Probably not quite as much as you would want them to be if you were going to eat them right now. But since we'll be baking this, they're gonna cook a little bit more. So you want them to be a little bit underdone. So after a minute, I pull them out, dip them into an ice bath to stop the cooking. And laid them out onto a wire rack. Now the beauty of fresh pasta, unlike dried pasta, is it doesn't seem to want to stick to itself. So I just stacked the sheets on top of each other and everything was fine. 
And at this point, if you want to do this ahead of time, you can go ahead and wrap these up in parchment paper and tinfoil uh, and throw them in the freezer for as long as you want. That is a pro tip that I learned on the internet. I'll link to the recipe that referenced that if I can find it again, but if not, just uh, take my word for it. As for me, I'm gonna continue making my lasagna. So next for the filling, since this is gonna be a Southern style lasagna, I'm going with brigotta instead of a bechamela. Could definitely use bechamela, and I have made a version of this before, but I do prefer rigotta. I find it a little bit creamier. The bechamela always has a little bit of a grittiness or flowery kind of taste. I just like this better. It's just me. To that rigotta, I will add some salt, some pepper, some dried oregano. You can use fresh if you want, doesn't really matter. And I gotta have a little bit of heat, so I'm adding some chili flakes. I'll smush that up. Mix it around. Add in that extra egg that we scraped off the counter before. And I almost forgot the garlic. In this case, I used three cloves of garlic, but that was a little bit excessive. It kind of had a bit of an overpowering garlic flavor, and I would probably take this down a notch by using maybe one or two cloves. These are big cloves, by the way, but you know, you do your thing. If you're one of those people that likes to use five cloves of garlic when it says two, that's all you. I minced it up finely and added that in. Mixed everything together. And then I added a spoonful of that mixture to the bottom of my baking dish. This will prevent the pasta from sticking to the bottom. Then I'll add in one sheet of lasagna and another layer of rigotta. Now for the zucchini, I'm gonna slice these on a mandolin. I made mine about four millimeters thick, which is a little bit thicker than I would have liked. The reason I did this is initially I was going to cook these on the grill, but it was about 90 degrees out, which uh, if you're unfamiliar with Fahrenheit, it's basically a scale of zero to 100. So 90 is not desirable. Long story short, I cooked it inside on the grill pan. Now to season this, I'm going to drizzle on some olive oil and brush it so it's evenly coated. I'll add some salt, some pepper, and some dried oregano. And since I have olive oil on the zucchini itself, I don't need to grease the pan. I just want to set it to high so we get a nice char. Make sure the pan is preheated so that as soon as you put it on there, you get a nice sizzle. After a few minutes, I flipped it over, got some nice grill marks on there. It won't have the same smoky flavor that the grill would have, but this will do pretty nicely in a pinch. Once that was cooked, I removed it out of the pan. I let it cool down a little bit before putting it in here so that it didn't immediately melt the ricotta. And once I put it in, I trimmed it down to size so that everything fit nicely and neatly. And now for cheese, I'm using a block of low moisture mozzarella. You can definitely use fresh mozzarella if that's all you can get your hands on. Just be sure to slice it about a day in advance and leave it on a plate in the fridge so that the water drains out. But I just prefer using this stuff because it lets out a lot less water, it melts a lot better, and honestly in melted applications like this it has a better flavor. It's got a little bit more salt in it so it just adds a little bit more oomph to the dish. I sliced that into thin little pieces and spread it on top of the zucchini. Then I grated some Parmesan, starting with my microplane, which took five ever. So I switched over to my rotary cheese grater, which I recommend everybody gets one of, if you like Parmesan in your life. Sprinkled some of that cheese on top, then put on another layer of lasagna, and repeated the process. Rigotta, then zucchini, then mozzarella, then parmesan, and now when you get to the top, just put another layer of all three cheeses, making sure there is no exposed pasta. I'm gonna pop that into a moderate oven, I'd say 180, 350, for about 25 to 30 minutes. Really just want this to heat up so the cheese melts and the pasta finishes cooking, and watch the top, make sure that it crisps up a little bit. If it's not crisping, you can always turn on the broiler or the grill, as the Brits say, and let that happen in a few minutes. 
Now, like I said, I had leftovers that I needed to deal with, namely those were the offcuts and extra pieces of lasagna, as well as the extra zucchini and some grated parm. So into that same saute pan from before, I added a drizzle of water just to help the pasta cook a little bit more and added in the extra lasagna, which I sliced into pretty fat noodles, probably about two or three centimeters wide. Let that cook for a few minutes while the water is simmering. Then I went in with my extra grilled zucchini. Now it has olive oil and that seasoning on it, so this is going to be a wonderful flavoring for the pasta. That oil is gonna mix with the starchy pasta water, which will create a creamy emulsion. Then I added in the grated parm and mix that around and it turns into kind of a creamy, cheesy sauce, similar to cacio e pepe, minus the pepper, although I guess there's pepper on the zucchini. So um, yeah, that's my new little summery tagliatelle zucchini dish. Now back to the lasagna. It's looking nice and crispy, so I took it out of the oven, sliced it into four beautiful servings, and shoveled it onto a plate. And look at this thing, look at those layers. The contrast, the colors, and that cheese pull. I mean, just give me a break. And the flavor of this is just so good. It's surprisingly light, even though it has all that cheese in it, because the zucchini is such a delicate, light flavor. Again, the garlic was a little bit strong, but overall, the combination of garlic, oregano, salt, black pepper, crushed pepper, and the creaminess of the ricotta, it's so summery, it's refreshing almost. And if you're like me and you feel like having lasagna, but it's too hot out to have a typical heavy red sauce version, I hope you give this a try.